-hmm. So we feel very confident at this point in the time saying we will get our environmental permit in due course. I can't tell you if it's going to be a month or six months, but it would, we believe it's going to happen. Commodity Global Expo with John Darch and Ken McLeod with Sonora Gold. How's it going? Really great. Thank you. Thank Pleased you. to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet both of you. Uh, let's talk about the project here. Let's give me a 30,000 foot view about the project. For those that don't know, where is it at? And uh, tell me about that. Also tell me about your background. Uh, let's hope it be John. My background is now with us involved in finance and mining. Uh, for the last 40 odd years, went from banking into creating my own public companies. The most notable would have been Asia Pacific Resources, where we developed over 1 billion tons of high grade production farming. It was eventually taken over by uh, this Thai company for about $130 million US when we were not able to get the mining license because we were not Thai. It was simple. The other one would have been Kruwi, School Development, where we started by taking a majority interest in Metarex in South Africa, which at that time was a private company. The idea of doing that was to get a cash flow, which we regarded as being critical for a small company. Having done that, we then uh, privatized the Chibalewa copper wire in Zambia, which is quite a feat for a Jewelry company to do. We then merged with Mindex in Norway, and then we opened up the first coal mine in Greenland. And in, well, in the Philippines, we had operations around the world. I left that company in 2002, having Spent so many years on the road with various companies, etc., and those are just two of the main ones. And um, then joined Ken to work on the GSM project with Western Geopark. So my background's in finance, and those are the companies. Nice. Yes, excellent. Uh, Ken, tell me about your background a little bit, and then if you can uh, take a little bit deeper dive into uh, Sorogle. Certainly, Andy. Thank you for the opportunity as well. I started off with my career as a mechanical engineer. And then in 1981, jumped into the oil and gas business based in Houston. And we were operating quite nicely there in the, you know, first, for the first few years of my new career. And then, of course, the oil and gas business got a little tough, and then it got involved in the mining business. And so we developed some small mining projects, first in Canada and in the U.S. And then in the late 90s, got back into the oil business in a substantial way. We were drilling... A, the world's first offshore horizontal completion well in the South China Sea off Kalawan Island, the Philippines. So that became a successful venture. Eventually, we took it through the, the then Vancouver Stock Exchange and then on to the, on to the uh, New York Stock Exchange after a couple of years. So that went well. And then in the, in the so, 90s, I got involved with, as, a, as a first foreign mining company to sign a deal with Mobutu while it was still president of the Congo, the DRC. And so we signed a deal there. We were developing a, a copper cobalt tailings and hard rock project. And, and I took that all the way through to 2002 when John and I got together and we decided we were set up a geothermal energy company. Started off in Canada, eventually moved to the Geysers Field in California. It became very successful. The company was taken over in 2009. Set up a private company in the Philippines after that. Then involved in renewable energy in both hydro and, and geothermal energy. And I sold that company in 2014, became president and CEO of Sonoro. And that has been my sole focus ever since. So, you know, and, you know, it's a full-time job as it is, but uh, it was, you know, for the politics in Mexico the past few years, it's an even greater full-time job. So tell me a little bit about the politics right now. There's a lot of concern about mining in Mexico. Uh, tell me about yourself and your team. How are you navigating that? And we know this is uh, uncertain, if you would, that can be uncertain in Byron and Mexico. Well, we, our team has been operating in Mexico for as much as 50 years. Our mining engineer and VP of operations started off with Peñol 50 years ago, and he's been involved in the design and construction and operation of numerous open pit heat bleach mines in Mexico, like the Mulatos Mine. La Colorada, and so on and so forth. And, and our, our head geologist, Mel Hardrick, who is the VP of Exploration, he's discovered over 5 million ounces of gold over his career, mostly in Mexico, but a little bit in the United States, but uh, essentially 5 million in Mexico alone. Some of the notables would be La Colorada and San Antonio, for example. These are large ones. 
we, we that the company went, our, our Sonoro Gold went public in 2011 with a project called Cipriona, which we sold to Agnico Eco in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And that enabled us to fund the two projects we currently have, San Marcial and the Cerro Caliche project. And so we have a wealth of expertise in Mexico. So we're no strangers to the political changes in Mexico. And we're not concerned about the, the, these changes anymore. And I can be happy to talk about that in greater detail because the, it is a topical issue. Yeah, if you could talk about that right now a little bit more in detail and then tell me a little bit about the projects. And then, John, I want to talk to you about the share structure. But if you could, tell me a little bit more about that. First, I'll, I'll talk about the project. And, and the, we started off drilling in, in 2018 on, on this project, Cerro Caliche. There's a grand total of 55,000 meters of drilling. We've identified in, in uh, the resort within the pit shells just under half a million ounces. And there's a further, according to SRK, there's a further almost 300,000 ounces outside of the pit shells that uh, are drilled, but, uh, but the drill spacing is not tight enough to classify it yet. Now, we will, of course, do some additional drilling in order to classify, to bring it into the pit shells in due course. But we view the project as a 2 million ounce potential. And we started off uh, on the basis of developing a large open pitable heat bleach bauxite deposit. And we've been very successful. In fact, we wanted to start off small with a pilot plant two, three years ago. But we were so successful with the drilling that we decided, oh, let's keep on drilling and keep on drilling. So now we're at the point where we produced a PEA uh, in October of 2023, based upon the resource that SRK had identified in earlier in 2023. And it's based upon uh, the, the half million ounce uh, within the pit shells at this point in time. And that gives us a, a throughput of 11,000 tons per day and a net gold production of 33,000 ounces a year over a nine year life of mine. Now that is strictly based upon the drilling we have done to date in the mineralized zones. 30% has been drilled. 70% of the known mineralized zones have not been drilled yet. We, they are mineralized because we have identified the, the mineralization at surface with surface sampling, but that's as far as we've gone with that 70%. So it stands to reason that if we keep on drilling and we do every single hole we drilled over the past five years, we've encountered mineralization. Mm -hmm. So no reason to believe that we will not keep a uh, very, very high record of, of hitting the mineralization and going forward. So we're comfortable in saying the target is 2 million ounces, but I, I, I consider right. a million ounces to be a fait accompli at this point in time. So that's the, the project as it stands. So the goal right now is to get the environmental impact statement approval mm -hmm. from San Bernard, the environmental agency, and then go into production. And the, the happy day would that would occur a um, year after we get the environmental approval, we would anticipate pouring the first Dory bar within 12 months. Good. Our team has done it in faster than that, but within 12 months is reasonable. So how, where do I think uh, we're going to go now with the environmental permitting? We submitted the, the um, environmental impact statement to Semernat in early 2022. We went through the entire process of question and answer, question and answer and everything. We fully expected to have the permit approval in 2022 by the end of the year. So now we're two, month, two years into the permitting process of where we would have expected to get the approval. And if we had received that, which by law we should have received two years ago, then we'd be in production a year ago. So there's a lost opportunity right now by having to stand still for the past two years waiting for the change in government. So that change has occurred. Now we have uh, President Scheinbaum. Claudia Scheinbaum has come in and she's a breath of fresh air to us miners. I look at it from the point of view of she has been able to shake loose from the old administration of Lopez Obrador and they've got, they were able to achieve the, the reforms that they wanted in the legal side of, of uh, running the affairs in Mexico, and also with the National Guard changing from private to uh, military overseeing. So as of October the 1st, she became the press. October the 2nd, she put out their 100-point uh, pledge to the Mexican people. 
in an earlier pledge from the earlier administration, one point that was, well, and I think it was point 87, was that a potential ban on future open pit mining. So on October the 2nd, she puts out a new 100-point plan. And guess what's missing? There is no potential ban on future open pit mining. So that was such insul reason not to invest in Signal. It was a ban on opal that mine, and that you're telling me is no longer the case. Is that correct? Well, as you know, bad news turns around the world before the good news gets out of bed. Well, that is the case in Mexico. All we heard in the past two years was you're not getting your environmental permit, and then, uh, and it was it became even more pronounced since April of this year when they started uh, ramping up the rhetoric as to no, no, no future open pit mining. But guess what? On Tuesday of last week, President Scheinbaum hosted in the palace in Mexico City, hosted 200, over 200 CEOs from the U.S.-Mexico Forum, where she stated without hesitation that your investments in Mexico are safe. We, and we welcome more foreign investment into Mexico. And of course, mining by foreign investors such as us is, is part of the nearshoring that she so desperately needs in order to keep the economy stimulated. Mm -hmm. So we feel very confident at this point in the time in saying we will get our environmental permit in due course. I can't tell you if it's going to be a month or six months, but it would, we believe it's going to happen. Okay, so you answered a lot of questions there that I had, and primarily it was an ETA, so we're looking at an ETA of six to 12 runs in fact, expectation for you to get permit out, correct? It could be as much as six months. I don't believe it will be much longer because we are, we have the support of the government of Sonora State. Right. And that, that government is working really hard on behalf of the mining companies, not just point. us, yes. but yeah. other mining companies, because 25% of the GDP of Sonora State is reliant on the mining industry. 8% of the, of the GDP for Mexico as a whole is reliant on the mining. So. This is an important issue for Governor Durazo of, of Sonora State. He wants to get these permits approved ASAP, and we are getting the support to ensure that with their assistance, we will get through Semernat in reasonably quick time. Excellent. And so then you're looking at, and I'm just reiterating, Corey involved within 12 months of being approved. That's the, that is a plan. We've done it before with our team. And actually, at uh, El Castillo and uh, La Colorada, we're much, much less than 12 months from the date of approval of the MIA until the first Dory Bar was poured. Real quick on about infrastructure to the mine, roads, power, everything is going to Riquillos of right now, correct? Right now, the road infrastructure is, is very, very significant because we built drill pads all over the place. Right. Also, we're in a ranch. And, and, and this is a good thing about, from an environmental perspective, we are on a producing ranch with 800, 1,000 head of cattle, living very harmoniously mm -hmm. together with our mining enterprise. There's a mine on next door to us, the Cerro Prieto mine, it's been operating for nine years. So the rancher is familiar with dealing with miners. And so it's, you know, once again, it's a harmonious relationship you have with the rancher. So they're, we're not disturbing any new ground, any pristine ground. There are no environmental issues as far as, uh, as, far as a, the rock is concerned. There is no arsenic. There's no manganese. And so from that point of view, we will not be contaminating downstream. As far as water supply is concerned, uh, the San Miguel Aquifer to our, to our north, about eight kilometers away, we would tap into it. it there's a, an excess of uh, availability uh, for the... San Miguel Aquifer. And we also, we purchased uh, the rights to, to uh, 250,000 cubic meters of, 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 of water per annum from one of the ranchers. So all of that uh, is, is very, very positive. But mostly the nearest town is Kukurpi, and it's 14 kilometers distant. And there's no sideline degradation. You cannot see a project from Kukurpi. And, but we do hire people from Kukurpi. So there's a lot of local support. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that, that is one of the greatest assets to have is when you have the support of, of the local community without any kind of interference from, from environmental groups because we are in a disturbed area. We're an area where the locals need us and want us, 
and it, it's a very satisfactory situation to be in. And we're surrounded by mines. Agnico Eagles, uh, Santa Gertrudis, future mine, eight kilometers to our north. The Mercedes mine on the same structure, eight kilometers to our southeast. And the Cerro Prieto mine adjacent to us, we could throw a rock into their open pit. Okay, excellent. John, let me come to you. Let's talk about um, the shares, if you would, as well as the finance end. Uh, how many shares do you really have outstanding that work to raise money at and what levels have we raised money at? I joined the company at the tail end of 2018. Okay. Having worked with Kendi Ford in the geothermal project, he invited me to participate and I joined as the chairman. At that time, I uh, had strong connections over in Europe from prior deals. And so we look at our share structure now, we have something like 200 million shares outstanding. The shares, uh, we've issued shares at uh, 15 cents, 10 cents, and most recently at, at, at 5 cents. But then as a result of the summit being very difficult for us, the, the, you know, the, the you know, uncertainty about what was going on in Mexico. Okay. Now, all the shares, um, the insiders like to be sure to bring Ken as an insider, Mel Herdrick, uh, Lee Diaz, and myself. We hold a total of about 24% of the issue chasing. Our average cost is my 13 cents a share. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I joined the company, um, some music to my ears, not to interrupt you, please. That somebody uh, in that is on it, and I mean this with all the respect, that you're somewhat underwater, so that you're in any kind of mines to Yeah, sure. Right. That's a that, 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 that go ahead. No, it's a, it's a fact, very yes. much a fact. And I think, you know, what distinguishes us from other junior companies, and I think there are four or five reasons which I would give you, but in terms of the share side, um, yes, we have the shares. Yes, we are underwater. But it's never uh, stopped our determination moving forward. And I think how that's reflected is that um, when we were hand on mine plan, we were to be in production in 2022. We'd arranged from project financing to be available. And everything was moving smoothly. And including in the project financing were property payments, which come out like a law, we claim so you know, right? So when the licensing come through, project finance was put to one side. So the insiders have put up three and a half million dollars into the company, unsecured, no repayment terms, specifically to pay the property payments and other operational costs. So that would be my next question, and you already answered, not to interrupt you, what are the terms? And it says there are no terms. No terms. No. And in my recent chairman's letter, which came out, I think, about a week ago, I stated in there, it's not the company's intention to convert the shares, is to get repayments from for profits and leak. And that's an important part to understand. So not only do the insiders have that strong commitment to the company, they demonstrate that through the belief of the company by putting up unsecured loans to make sure that they will not fail. And that is why we have such a strong support from our European shareholders. And if I may tell you why we have that strong Please. support. Uh, over the years, uh, we developed projects, Asia Pacific Sources, of course, a huge success. Went to $11. Eventually sold for about 140 million to a Thai custody crew development, uh, uh, where we privatized uh, the Chippewa of Copper Mine, which was Mindex. Uh, we, we did a lot of good things. So, so, as you know, when people make money, they tend to follow the jockeys. And that was my conversation with Rick Rule. A jockey on a donkey will win a race. She did a fun. She's there. So, anyway, um, we have that sort of strong level of support over there. And, I think what's most important about Sonora, though, is not just that shareholder base, all the loans, et cetera. I ask you to consider Sonora as a whole. And we have a, a, a double-sided fact sheet, which we call Why Sonora? And I think it shows why we are quite unique. And like, unique is a funny word to use because either you are or you're not. I'm sure there's a similar company somewhere, but if I give you the five essential components that we had, then you'll understand what they mean. Please. It's the team. I'll... The team is comprised of four individuals, each who've got 40 years' experience in mining. Each have been successful in their own ways. They've all come together this as one project. So it's not a matter of if you do not like this company, we'll show you a different way. So we are dedicated to this company. What's more important, though, we have four different disciplines geology, engineering, mining, and marketing. You know what it's like with a company that's driven by an engineer or a geologist or a financial right. guy or whatever. We have that balance. That we are full, successful mining people 
who absolutely operate a commercial operation. This is not a promotion, as most imposters says. This is a commercial operation, which is why we continue to fund it ourselves. And the reason we ever put our loans in and then convert it to shares, because we don't want unnecessary dilution. We want to demonstrate to our shareholders to us. We're not here to take advantage of you. We're here to support the company. If we are that confident, we're going to go to production. We'll wait to get the money back. So we have a team who are competent. They believe in the project. They demonstrate that belief by their share ownership in the company. Ken spoke well about the, the project itself. I think what a lot of people have not understood. Only him has to realize, oh, that's where we go. Absolutely in error. Oh. It was the basis was plan that dictated how much we drill. Correct. It was not the drilling that dictated the business plan. And that's very important because it a junior comes with hatch most times is the potential size of it. It could pass to the market as the standard operation. It's beyond their expertise. So people with the good hearts, very woody, they have to pray to be taken over. So they have no choice but drill, drill, drill. So when you have that mentality, when they look at the scenario, but they say, oh, that's where you've gone. They need to understand it was a conscientious decision to stop. Don't waste any more money. And I give the analogy like a grocery store. If you sell baked beans, you don't have 10 years supply of baked beans. You just have what you need at the time. Now, the good thing is, um, that is understood by our European shareholders. They understand what we're doing, so why we're doing it. And the reason we do well over in Europe, I believe, is because they enter into a project on like a three to five year tour. That's what we said. This is the three or five year project. And most recently, I've just come back from Sweden. We had a very successful show. And the European mentality of wanting to know value, are you a promotion? Are you a real business vehicle? How much money do you have into it? We were able to answer all those things successfully, and that was fun. So I've given you three of these five years of components. The team, the project, the chair structure. But there are two other things that are most important to be a successful company, whether it's a gold mining company or another company. Do you have a business cloud? One of the things that Ken and I brought to this company was to have a defined business plan. Now, Business plans are targets, and therefore you have to move and change as you go. So we've never moved away from the business plans go to production as soon as we can, as soon as we know we have sufficient, being confident that the rest is there. So the very firm business plan. And the last thing that I think is very important is access to funds. We've clearly demonstrated we have access to funds. In our careers, Ken mm -hmm. and I, we've probably raised three to $400 million for various projects. So we're not concerned about that. Indeed. The capital cost to take Sonora to production is fifteen and a half million dollars. That's all. And people go, well, well, what about the mill? And what about this and that? There's no mill. This is an open pit. So to take away the quote, the romance of money, this is a glorious light gravel pit. Mm -hmm. Think of it that way. Yep. The capital cost is those. So we have the skilled people, we have the dedicated people, we have the good shareholder base, we have a business plan, very firm. And we have access to cash. So unlike the majority of junior companies, we have the ability to take you four weeks. Now, hopefully, we'll continue to get more support for shareholders. Mm -hmm. uh, but if not, it can be relied on that the entire will make sure this project succeeds. That's music to my ears. Down. Thank you. But it's true. So that you can look at all the records to show that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't leave you. Well, I, um, anything that I'm missing really from here, and this is a question to either one of news that investors should know. Yeah. And I guess, and I'll give you my thoughts right after I ask you this that question. Um, yeah. I think the, the largest detriment to our ability to, to thrive in the market in the past two years has been the, the attitude of the Mexican government towards mining in general, but most specifically towards open pit mines. Now, I believe now that that threat is gone. We can now breathe a sigh of relief. We can now start to tell people that Mexico is open for business in the mining sector and specifically as well in the open pit mining sector because our economy needs us. And when you contribute to 70% of mining activity through open pit mines, that is a significant portion of the Mexican economy. It's absolutely. Yeah. I, think you like, I would just say, Remember, it's less than three weeks since the new president announced or did not announce a battle of the way. 
We have a shareholder base in contact with so well over six to seven five who we keep regularly updated. And I think that's a good thing. We continue to update people, quarterly chairman's letters, news releases, etc. And from what we've seen, the initial reaction, some people say, okay, now it's time to do something. But there's still a large number of people who say, we like the temperature, we like what's happening, et cetera. But we wouldn't wait until we actually hear you got the license. So we anticipate that what we've seen in the last um, 15 days or something, which is about 7 million shares trading and they are ticking for more and more people are getting counseled for saying, these guys support it and they're committed. They obviously are stupid or they're very shrewd people. And I like to refer to them, the rule rule, the time to look in Sonoro is when everybody's stuck in the other way. Yeah. So I wasn't planning on doing this. Um, and this is not an endorsement. Uh, those gentlemen, Sonora Gold have not paid me to, or Drew to cut this video. It's I, I am as of this, as of this cutting, as of dropping this video, I am as of now, not an investor that more than likely will be changing. Uh, what I would talk, saying all of you who really want to go, what you just said, want to go where, uh, People are not going, and you also want to be just foot, justly compensated for the risks that you're taking. I will fully acknowledge that Mexico has been quite the risk in the past um, with this new information, which I was also somewhat aware of, that risk more than likely will, will be changing, but it is still a significant risk. That being said, as Rick Wu said, has taught me, you want to be just, justly compensated for risk that you're taking. What means a lot to me is the insiders that are holding it and that we, um, I don't know what the dilution history, but it seems to me like it hasn't been much of that and you're already underwater. So if you do dilute more, and I'm just saying this from one gentleman to another, you're going to be hurting yourselves. So to me, that's a huge positive because as an investor, I don't want to be diluted unless it's necessary at all costs. So I do really actually appreciate that. It does seem to me that Sonora is significantly undervalued. Again, this is not an endorsement. I have not been paid for this. And um, I am, as of this video cutting, I am not an investor or that more like to really change. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. Okay. I look forward to spending more time with both. Thank you. May I just say one other thing yes. I forgot to mention, which is um, we will not roll back the stock. That's not our intention. That's a very important thing for people to understand that if they get invested and not wait, he get one day to find even more back. That not on our cards. We have no need to do it. We're comfortable with our ownership. We're comfortable with the fact we get our money back when we go to production. And if uh, we, we look at what the net present value of the yeah. operation would be based upon current uh, gold price, it, it's uh, in. I'm sure, I could say this, but there's well over 200 million in the US. It's easy to work out. I, again, I, it's not been uh, demonstrated in the PA. PA they showed $1,800 and I actually $2,000 and I but if there's a confidence level that 2,500 or 2,400 is, is a base now, it doesn't take long to calculate for the PA what it will be and it should be. Let's just say it's significantly more than the current market price of the stock. Excellent. Ken, if you could please share, uh, what is your tickers on Murphy? Ticker symbols, what exchanges you're trading on and your website you talked in. Sonora Gold is trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the trading symbol SGO and is also on the OTCQB under the symbol SMOFF and on the Frankfurt Exchange under the symbol 23S. P. We've been trading now since uh, 2011 on the TSX, so we have a long history now uh, of uh, trading on the, the various exchanges, including OTCQB. Excellent. And I will put all of this information in the show notes below this video and in the podcast. Gentlemen, I just want to thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. A real pleasure. A real pleasure. Thank you, you Andy. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Pleasure meeting you too in person. Thank you.